Well, we definitely have to link the whole carbon question to biodiversity issues. The, probably the easiest way to look at it is that um, we face two major problems. One is climate change, but an even stronger problem is actually the degradation of biological resources, the loss of biodiversity. It, usually people look at it from the perspective, do I really care if the elephant doesn't uh, uh, roam any more the landscapes of Africa. This is not the point. The point is actually that we lose ecosystem functionality. Among others is, for example, pollination, which is ensured by biodiversity. We see that crisis already unfolding with the dying off of bee populations, for example. And so linking these two questions makes a lot of sense. There is, as a matter of fact, lots of indicators already showing that diversity of ecosystems and diversity of species is linking directly to the capacity of storing carbon in ecosystems. That link is manifest in many tropical ecosystems, especially mangroves, which store lots of carbon. But uh, it is also quite apparent for, for example, natural pastures. So exploring that link further, and especially under programs like RED, for example, which is all about preserving and maintaining functionality, but also carbon content, it makes a lot of sense to understand actually this linkage to be better able to manage and maximize carbon storage. Well, the foreseen, the right now foreseen ex, uh, changes in ecosystem carbon depend a lot on, on the models we actually employ to model climate change. These models, as the name suggests, are only models. They are based on the data sets and the parameters we know for now, and we can't by no means be sure. What right now we see is actually a major release of carbon of some ecosystems. The permafrost is probably the most prominent one, but also land uh, ecosystems like mangroves release in the moment a lot of carbon. Um, the, this is definitely one sign of ecosystem degradation. Um, it could be, on the other hand, that some ecosystems will actually display um, a stronger sink status as for carbon, for example, with the movement of climate zones up north and the, um, of, of boreal forests up north. So balancing, balancing that and understanding that is actually crucial for carbon management programs. And so in this fashion, red is one, as one of the programs is focusing right now on the, on the tropical forest lands because we probably have here the best idea what the carbon um, impact or the climate change impact on carbon storage is and that is definitely negative in the sense that they are going to release carbon for a time to come. Well, the, it is very important to look at the land cover change of today as it basically constitutes about 20 to 28 percent of the whole emissions of carbon. So carbon emissions are mainly caused by land cover change. Together taken, ca land cover change actually causes the more emissions of carbon than the whole traffic and transport sector together combined. So um, looking at land cover change, the change of our ecosystem is really crucial to understand the fluxes in ecosystems. And understanding the fluxes in ecosystems for us is really crucial to maintain their services uh, to the human uh, habitat. For example, water storage, water cleaning, um, but also services like uh, disease protection and coastal protection that definitely needs attacking. Carbon here is just one of the vehicles which might actually permit us to enforce or to maybe implement really uh, instruments which help us to manage ecosystems in a better fashion.